welcome everyone and thank you very much for joining us for this special event. The pandemic uh, has deprived many of us from cultural events like this. And this is really sad because culture is such an important element to connect people, not only locally, across borders and worldwide. And um, it also deprives, of course, musicians, when we look at music as an area of culture, from uh, the opportunity to train and grow. And uh, together with all of you, uh, we want to help you today by creating a stage for musicians who are at the beginning of their professional career. Before I hand over to Matthias Schulz, who is the artistic director of the State Opera here in Berlin, I would like also to thank our occupational health management team to ensure, for ensuring that uh, all uh, rules uh, under the pandemic situation in regard to hygiene have been observed. Matthias, may I ask you to the stage, please? Yeah, thank you very much, Oliver Renner. Um, we are very grateful to be here. Um, the Orchestra Academy of the Staatskapelle of Berlin exists since 97, and uh, this means nearly 25 years, and it's a very important, important part of the Berlin State Opera. And highly gifted graduates of universities under 12, 27 years of age are granted a two-year scholarship. During that time, they gain varied experience in practical orchestra work, and this is in opera and concert. And uh, to be prepared for these challenges, the academy members receive extensive training and advice from their mentors. So this mentoring system is the very, very important. The Orchestra Academy provides permanent supply of fresh air to our institution and, and is an essential part of our external presentation. Bayer is a member of our patron cycle of the Freunde und Förderer of the Staatsoper unter den Linden. And uh, this partnership came, came about of this uh, yeah, fantastic uh, relationship. We are Bayer incredibly grateful for making this concert possible to give our young talents the possibility to perform in front of an audience. This is uh, not self-evident in the times. And support in this area in particular is so valuable because it happens right in the transition uh, to a professional life, which is also in these times even more important. Thank you very much and enjoy the concert. you and we can't wait to perform live in concert for you again hopefully soon however we are we feel very honored and we are super excited and grateful for this opportunity to play in this live stream concert for you today sometimes we find unexpected beauty in unknown paths the first piece of our program definitely uh, qualifies as such. We start with the clarinet quartet by Bernard Crusell. Bernard Crusell is a Finnish composer. He was born in Finland in 1775, learned to play the clarinet already from a very young age, and then as a young man went to Berlin and to Paris to study clarinet and composing, composition and later returned to Scandinavia, to Stockholm, to, the, uh, to, to become a, a musician at the uh, Royal Court in Stockholm, the Swedish Royal Court. The piece we're gonna play for you has four movements, uh, an epic first movement, a romancer second, a dancing third movement, and a very virtuosic finale fourth movement. You will hear Miriam Dersen on the clarinet. She's from the Netherlands. <coughs> Jiring Lim on the cello. She's from South Korea. Mariana Lopsch on the violin. She's from Portugal. And my name is Friedemann Slenska, and I play the viola, and I'm from Berlin. Enjoy.
Einstein said about Mozart's music to be, quote, so pure and beautiful that I find that I see in them the inner beauty of the universe itself. The next piece we play for you tonight is a duet for violin and viola by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. In 1783, Mozart returned to his hometown Salzburg, and this time he was already on the peak of his career to visit his father, to present to him his new wed wife, Constanze, which, by the way, Leopold Mozart never really approved of, and to catch up with some old friends. Amongst them, Michael Haydn, the brother of the famous composer Josef Haydn, younger brother, who was also a composer in the service of the Archbishop of Salzburg. Now, the Archbishop of Salzburg, who also played uh, violin, asked Ma Michael Haydn to write six duets for violin viola for him to play. And in the time Mozart was in town, Michael Haydn got sick and asked Mozart, he only finished uh, four of the quartets, whether Mozart could contribute the missing two pieces. Mozart did, and for a long time, it was believed that these two quartets would be out of the hand of Michael Haydn. Only later, it was found out that they were originally by Mozart. We play the second of them in B major. Um, it has three movements, and I hope you enjoy it.
Hello everybody, my name is Dani, I come from Barcelona, and today I'm going to play for you a, a piece called Dura Dynastics. Dura Dynastics was composed by British composer and, and professional trombone player, Brian Lee. Composer was, nine, uh, was born in 1954 uh, in England and is currently trombone player in English National Opera. The piece was composed for a, also a British trombone player, specialist in contemporary music, John Kenny, in, and the piece was composed in 1989. Duranastics starts with, let's say, not the most optimistic way, since already the first indication for the composer is the, its subtitle, which is a brief torture for an accompanied trombone. As you can see, this doesn't give the best mood for the performer to start a performance, but um, as you will be able to, to listen, it kind of makes sense. The piece is a kind of dialogue between like this very crazy and virtuosic parts, and then these other like very lyrical and smooth sections, which kind of, to be honest, I was thinking kind of makes the, it's like a comparison with nowadays. It's like if the composer had seen the upcoming events that we are facing nowadays when he was writing the piece in 1989. The piece is written in a jazz funk style, so it's not really a classical, a classical piece. And for me, it kind of helps to divide the different section of the piece while constantly thinking in a drum set. So there will be parts like for me it will be like a very jazz inspired, so I will hear in my head like this shuffle with the drum set. Other parts may be more like funk or more like Latin jazz with the for example. And other parts may be more uh, melodical will remind, for example, like some even Disney movies melodies, for example, or even some part like some Inspector Gadget character. Nevertheless, it's a piece that at some point reaches a quite a hysterical point, which is uh, which I think it's gonna be very clear which one I mean. So I just hope you don't get scared by it. And last but not least, the composer writes a very nice indication after this brief torture, which I'm sorry I cannot share with you, but uh, I must say I am kind of looking forward to this small reward at the end of the piece. In any case, I hope you enjoy and yeah, have fun with gymnastics. Thank <laughs> you. 
stage for the next piece, we would like to introduce you to another small ensemble of the Staatsoper Unter den Linden, which is the children's choir, who still keeps singing with all of his friends all over the world, even in these this difficult times. Please enjoy the video and join us again in a few minutes.
Yeah, live now. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the last part of our chamber music concert. Uh, it's very nice to have a lot of uh, audience. Although it's virtual, it's a very nice feeling. My name is Güneş Yazılar. I am from Istanbul, Turkey. And today, now, we are going to play for you Astor Piazzolla's History of Tango for you with Mariana on the violin. Um, a little bit information about Astor Piazzolla. Uh, he was born in 1921 in Argentina. He is a bandoneon player, composer, and a performer. And at first, he studied in his home country with Alberto Ginastera. And then he went to study Paris uh, with the famous pedagogue Nadia Boulanger. And there, uh, he showed her a lot of his compositions. She had a look at them. She liked them very much. She said, well, very good. But I don't see, I don't hear any piazzola here, she said. And she inspired and motivated him to be more of his authentic self. And then after his studies, he went back to Argentina and he focused on his folk music, focused on tango music, and he added the classical music and jazz elements to his music and actually um, made a revolution with this music. He took it from bordellos to the cafes, nightclubs, and to the concert halls. And as you can recognize from the name of this piece, History of Tango, uh, this music tells the evolution of the tango music in a chronological order. And today with Mariana, first we are going to play Bordel 1900. And um, in this music, uh, early tangos are very fast and also in this music you will see that it's a very joyful, fast, uh, high temperament tango. And after that we will skip the second movement, we will skip the cafe tango and then we will go to nightclub nightclub uh, 1960 and about this section Mariana will tell you about the story. Yes, so we go straight on to nightclub 900, 1960 and this was a time where tango became internationally renowned and all people were hearing about it and it was also influenced by Bossa Nova which was also appearing in Brazil. So people were going to the nightclubs and hear all of this new music, dance to it. So in this specific movement, you will notice a very drastic change of mood. So you will hear a very fast character, then a very melancholic melody. And um, I hope you enjoy it. So this piece was originally composed for guitar and flute. So we are playing today, as you can see, with harp and violin. And there are some very special effects that Piazzolla wrote on the score that we are not able to play in our own instruments. For example, in the flute, it was supposed to be with air. So in the violin, I will show you, I will play a very annoying scratchy noise, which will be very rhythmical. And that's about it. And with the harp, and with the harp, as mentioned already, it's originally for, uh, written for the guitar. And in this arrangement, I will play the harp rather than a harp, sometimes as a guitar, and I will do an effect like this. And also sometimes you will see me playing the harp as a percussion instrument, and I will be knocking on the soundboard. Or sometimes even slapping on the soundboard. And plus, Maybe it's difficult to see from there, but we have actually here seven pedals. And um, sometimes you will also hear the harp doing an effect like this, and this is called pedal glissando. And yeah, as our final words, we also would like to say that today we would like to dedicate our performance to Piazzolla because uh, this year is his 100th birthday anniversary. So, enjoy the music.